Hey guys, Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with a travel video of my recent trip to Los Angeles, California for the mighty, the big, the epic E3 Expo. So in this video, I'm gonna show you highlights from that trip, lots of behind the scenes footage, also parties, and yes, lots and lots of video games. Let's take a look. Now E3 technically starts on a Tuesday, but like many other people, I like to fly in a little bit early because so much stuff happens actually before the expo actually opens its doors. So I landed down in LA on a Sunday and I gotta tell you, coming from Seattle, it was glorious seeing this awesome weather. Kelsey booked the Airbnb this time and to my surprise, it's the exact same building as last year, which is such a good thing because for its price, it's an amazing view. It's an amazing apartment. You get to see all of Los Angeles. And again, we split it four ways. So it's actually cheaper than a hotel. Almost immediately after dropping off our bags at the Airbnb, Kinsey invited us to the Devolver Digital E3 party that was happening. This is invite only. And we, uh, we took an Uber out to like this weird art installation with these domes. It actually looked really cool. This was a mix of music. There were some vendors. There were some artists there, uh, free food and free drink. It was really cool. These type of parties are a mix of journalists and YouTubers. You also have program managers, developers, just anyone who's part of the gaming industry all comes down and hangs out. It's actually really fun. And then towards the end of the night, they actually brought out a Pink Floyd tribute band. Now I am a huge Pink Floyd fan and I'm always skeptical when I hear the word tribute band, but these guys, well, they kicked ass. They were pretty awesome. At around 11 o'clock, we were craving some ramen. You guys know me, I do love my ramen, and uh, LA has some great restaurants, so we uh, took an Uber over to one of the better ones. If you are in LA, definitely check out this place because, man, the ramen and the gyoza was right on point. It was awesome. And then we stumble back to the apartment, and John Riggs and I are playing some PS4 games. Not bad for a first day, actually. That was really fun, but tomorrow, we're gonna start hitting it hard. Wake up on Monday morning and one of my first priorities is to go around the corner to one of my favorite coffee shops in LA and that is Coffee Project. So have you heard of Hipster Toast? That is basically, how do I describe it? It's basically stupidly expensive avocado toast that they sell in LA. I don't know if it, if it comes from here, but this Coffee Project place sells it and this is, uh, this is my breakfast. Look at that, it's insane, it's so good. It's at this point that I meet up with Kelsey, Cody, and John Riggs, and we're gonna run over to the expo real quick and pick up our media badges. We like to do that a day before the show opens, because that way you don't have to stand in line on Tuesday morning. You can just walk right in and hit the floor running. Now that we got our media badges, it's time to do a little bit of sightseeing, and every time we come to LA, one of the first places we tend to go is Little Tokyo. We went there last year, had a blast, and we're gonna go there again. This is a really cool place where you can shop, you can get food, and of course there are video games. Retro Game Camp is a store that I went to last year, so it probably looks a little bit familiar to you guys, but I had to hit it up this year because, well, you never know what you're gonna find. They have so many Japanese imports. It's packed full of them. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I didn't pick anything up here because I just got back from Japan and doing all that game hunting there, but, if you are in LA and you are a retro game fan, you definitely have to check this place out because they've got some good deals and they've got some stuff you normally just don't see. And then we wrapped up Monday night doing a little get together at Wolf and Crane. This is a pub in Little Tokyo. The thing is E3 is pretty crazy. People have appointments and schedules. And so we wanted to do a little get together before all of that madness started and see some of our friends and maybe meet some new people as well. It was at this party that John Lineman from Digital Foundry showed up, as well as Clint, of course, from Lazy Game Reviews, 
Aaron Play, Travis Brown, a whole bunch of really cool people showed up. It was very small, but uh, it went on for a couple hours and uh, it got a little crazy, but man, it was, it was a ton of fun. Tuesday morning, the official first day of E3. But before all of that, of course, we got to get up and watch the Nintendo Direct. This starts at 9 a.m. And uh, this was really interesting because a lot of excitement in the room, uh, especially from Kelsey. She was really very anxious about one of her favorite franchises, which is Animal Crossing. She wanted to see what Nintendo were going to say about it. I've been doing laps around this room for like the last 10 minutes. I'm really, really excited and scared. I'm very scared. <laughs> Why is that bad? This I isn't Animal Crossing. This is Harvest Moon. This is Harvest Moon. <laughs> and as you can see, she wasn't very happy with, with what they said. Uh, in her words, she basically said, it's a little bit too much like Harvest Moon and not enough like Animal Crossing. But you know, it's still a ways off, so we'll have to see. Now we're hopping into an Uber, and thanks to our Airbnb, actually, we're not very far from the convention center. It's the perfect location. So we get there in probably, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. It's actually really close. You know, it's funny, I've been going to E3 for decades now, and you know, on and off. I've been there many, many times, and every year I'm always like, eh, I don't need to go, you know, I, I'm cool. But then, then just weeks before, well, actually even months before, I start getting really excited. And this is the moment right here where it's the countdown, the doors are gonna open, and every single time I come, I get, I get so excited, I get giddy. I'm just like a little kid again. I just can't wait to just bust through those doors and see all the new video games. This year, I had a little bit of a plan because I wanted to run over to Hyperkin almost immediately because I know that they're gonna be showing off that N64 clone prototype. So that's exactly what I do. I go through the South Hall, take a left, follow the wall all the way back to Hyperkin, just like within minutes of opening. What I learned about this device is that it's really, I'm gonna call it a proof of concept. I mean, it's a prototype for sure, but basically Hyperkin was like, hey, we wanna kind of gauge the interest. What is the interest of having a clone system for the N64? Because I guess they didn't really know. And if you've been following this on social media, you realize that yes, there is definitely demand for this. And actually talking to Cody and Kelsey, they own Pink Gorilla Games. They know that a lot of customers come into their store going, hey, how do I play my you know, N64 cartridges through HDMI on my HD television? So this is a solution for that. But the reason why this is behind their closed doors is because they're looking for feedback from people like me, like, you know, what do I think about it? Um, you know, are they going the right direction with it? Stuff like that. So this was not set up to be played or anything like that. It was just simply like, hey, we're thinking about making this. What do you guys think? And, you know, I'm sold on it. I mean, if it's if it's quality, if it looks good, if it plays well, uh, there's definitely demand for it. There are a couple little things to consider. You know, is it gonna be emulation? Could it be FPGA? Um, that's a huge question mark. So they're looking into all of that. Hyperkin sells an entire suite of solutions for retro gamers like us, and they showed me a bunch of uh, things that are either for sale currently or maybe coming down the pipe later on this year. Uh, I always get really excited about Hyperkin because I like th some of the really weird and crazy and fun things that they make, all the colors and uh, like, you know, like bringing back the Duke controller for the Xbox. I mean, it's just insane. It's really fun. Almost immediately after leaving Hyperkin, Cody runs up to me and he's like, hey, will you film me doing this Fortnite competition here? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. So basically, look at this. It's it's a competition. I don't even know what you're supposed to win here. And I don't know if it even matters, but this is a spinning device. I don't know what you call this thing, but basically it's trying to knock everybody off and it moves kind of randomly. So you either need to jump 
or duck. And as it goes along, it starts spinning up. And uh, Cody didn't win, but he went further than I expected him to. He was trying really hard. It was, it was hilarious. And after that, I was kind of left to my own devices. Now, a lot of people, when they go to E3, they make appointments and they schedule meetings with people. Uh, there's a lot of that that goes on. The thing is, for me, I don't really like to do that because I don't like to be rushed. I love walking around E3 and just bouncing around like a pinball, you know, just going from one booth to the other, one shiny thing to another. I love the people watching. I like looking over people's shoulders and seeing what they're playing. I like grabbing the controllers myself. And if you have a bunch of appointments, it, it becomes kind of a, uh, a drag a little bit, like you're just running around all the time. And I really just wanna take it all in, especially on the first day. And so that's what you see here. I'm just going around, taking photos, looking at the games and just loving it. We did have an appointment with Intellivision Entertainment and this was really interesting. This was definitely behind closed doors and essentially, <laughs> this is really weird, but basically I agreed to an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement to basically just say that yes, I've played the Amica. This is their upcoming console. This is the reboot of the Intellivision. And that's really all I can say. I just wanna mention it in this video because I know people are curious if it's real. And the answer is yes, I've seen it. I've played games on it. I gave them feedback, but for now they want us to not talk about it in detail. But rest assured, I will be one of the first people to review this when the time comes. Some people on social media were asking if you could tell or if you could feel that Sony wasn't there. Maybe it was, you know, a little bit empty feeling because Sony wasn't there this year. And the answer is no. I mean, I really didn't notice. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Sony. I love my PlayStation 4. Would it be better if they were there? Absolutely. Everyone wants to see what Sony is is offering and, you know, what's coming up for the the PlayStation. But in truth, E3 is massive. It takes over the entire LA Convention Center and also spills out onto the street. So you don't really feel it. Instead, it's almost like, like you don't have to focus on Sony so much because there's everything else around. Does that make sense? Like there's maybe just more room for smaller players to, uh, to shine on the floor. And to those people who say that E3 is dying, uh, maybe, I don't know. I mean, look at the Nintendo line here. Every single day, people were lined up for hours and hours to play the latest Nintendo games. So is it dying? I, I don't think so. The other thing I was really curious to check out was the Polymega. Now, if you haven't heard of this, it's quite unique. And they had a working prototype on the floor that anyone could play. And so this is really wild. It's basically a clone system, but it's unlike any other on the market. The idea behind this is that it supports physical media and then you buy the module that you want for that support. So for instance, this has crazy support for all sorts of stuff. The original PlayStation, Saturn, Genesis, Mega Drive, uh, 32X, Sega CD, it's got TurboGrafx-16, PC Engine. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And then you have these separate modules. Now, in my mind, this sounds way over ambitious. I mean, I was like, and I think a lot of you two are like, wow, how are they gonna pull all this off? I mean, it technically plays 30 different systems and 9,000 games, it's crazy. However, after sitting down and holding a controller in my hand and playing games on the live unit, and also talking to the CEO and founder of it, I walked away genuinely impressed. I really did. They were also showing off a new light gun. Now it's not working at this point, but they are in the process of building it and testing it and stuff like that. And they, they were showing it here. They're also getting some feedback as well as to the, the weight and also the, the, the grip and stuff like that. So yeah, you know, I, I walked away from Polymega well, I went there skeptical and I walked away impressed. I really did. So I can't wait to review this when it ships. And then here's some swag that I picked up on my first day at E3. And as you can see, it's a bunch of t-shirts, 
I will wear these in my videos. I love t-shirts as well as a couple Hyperkin HDMI cables for retro systems. So this is a very cool that they gave me these and uh, I may review these in the future. It's Wednesday, day two of the expo and another glorious day in Los Angeles. Although no real plans for appointments, I'm just gonna wander the floor. However, I plan to piggyback onto one that uh, John Riggs has scheduled later on in the afternoon. I did wander over to the Video Game Museum, and like last year, I was really impressed with this. It's cool because while E3 is known for showing the latest and greatest and also the upcoming games, it's nice having an entire section of the floor dedicated just to retro and kind of the history of video games and everything that came before. And then not far away, I wandered into the Arcade 1UP booth and I was pretty blown away by their showing here at E3. It's amazing how much this company has grown in a relatively short amount of time. And they had a bunch of cool stuff that I hadn't even seen before. Uh, stuff that I didn't even know that they were working on like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was cool to see. They also had Golden Tea. And then as I was about ready to leave, they, they basically said, okay, we're gonna announce something completely brand new on the floor here. And there was a whole crowd gathered around. I was like, oh gosh, I, have no, I had no idea what this was, right? So of course, the big announcement from them was that they are going to release a mini arcade of the Star Wars arcade machine, including the yoke controller. I don't think that's ever been done before, so that was really exciting to see. Uh, I also talked to their PR person and I should be getting a review unit as soon as possible. So that review will be coming to my channel in the near future. I also wandered over to the Retrobit booth and they had some pretty cool stuff to check out, including a prototype Dreamcast controller, but notice it has six face buttons. Now, please note that is unpainted and not finished. Simply a prototype, but they're showing it off to gauge interest. They were also showing the upcoming Metal Storm Collector's Edition. It's looking pretty awesome. However, notice that the uh, little figurine there is not yet painted, so they have a bit more work to do. And now it's getting close to noon and I'm getting a little bit hungry. So we crossed the street and went over to the Devolver Digital booth. This is the press booth that I go to every year because it's basically like a nonstop party. They have food, they have beer, they have games, they live stream, it's awesome. And speaking of streaming, I noticed Gerard, the completionist was over there doing some live streaming and I just couldn't help myself. I actually walked over there just to say hi and kind of mess with them a little bit. But to my surprise, they invited me to sit down and uh, and do commentary. So this was really fun. I actually got to mess with them a little bit and we had a great time here. So that was, that was a total blast, completely unplanned. After some food, some drink and hanging out with friends, it's time to get back onto the expo floor because we have an appointment with Zen Studios. Now they may sound familiar because they have been making awesome pinball games for a long time now, and I'm a huge fan of that. This is actually John Riggs, uh, th this is his appointment, but he's allowing me to piggyback onto it. And they showed us the upcoming Switch compilation of Star Wars pinball games, that was very cool, as well as this full-size digital pinball machine that's gonna be like in cruise ships and down in Vegas. They didn't say how much it was, but they indicated it's gonna be pretty expensive, but it was pretty neat, it was definitely cool. A little bit later on in the evening, we got invited to an industry only party called The Mix. Now what this is, it's a bunch of indie developers that bring their demo units with their games up to this hotel floor and then everyone plays the games. You get to talk to the developers, you get to talk to the artists, you get to talk to the people who make it, who publish it. And then at the end of the night, they vote on which one is the best. This is the part of E3 that a lot of public people don't really get some insight into. There's all of these parties and events that happen around the main E3 event. And it's nice because 
it's a little bit more casual. It's not as crowded. You get one-on-one -on -one time with a developer or the artist. You can pick their brain a little bit. It's, it's definitely really cool. And then here's some of the random swag I got, including a gaming headset from X Rocker, as well as some magazines. Hadn't seen these before, so that's pretty cool. Interested in checking them out, as well as some slippers from Zen Studios. I'm not sure why we got slippers, but they're actually pretty comfortable. It is day three and we are off and running to our first appointment of the morning and that is CD Projekt Red. We are going to get the press only version of their trailer for Cyberpunk 2077. Let's go see some Cyberpunk. And just like last year, they went all out on this. They had a bar on either side where you can take a photo. There's all this stuff on the walls from the game. And then they usher you into this room and they played a 55 minute long real time demo. This is different than what everyone saw on the internet. This is uh, this is kind of like compliments that in a way. And again, just like last year, what I saw about the game blew me away. This is gonna be next gen. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna buy it day one. And then I got to walking around and realized that I hadn't actually checked out the Microsoft Xbox area yet. And I was trying to think because I think last year they weren't on the floor either. Although it used to be Microsoft would absolutely be on the main convention floor with everybody else. But you have to go outside of the main hall, cross this little street, and then you stand in line to, uh, to get into here. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. This was underwhelming. I don't know what Microsoft is thinking because they basically have you stand in line to go into the building to then go sit down in the main seating area to wait to go up on stage to play these games. Now, if you are a hardcore Xbox fan and that seems worth it to you, great. But I will tell you as someone who goes to these a lot, sometimes you just wanna look over someone's shoulder. You know, you you can play the games great, but you can, it's nice because you can usually like still see the game, still participate. But at the Xbox area, you can't do that. You have to wait to get into the building and then sit in the chairs to go up there. It's just a really bizarre situation. So we didn't hang out very long. So we left there a little underwhelmed, but it's the last day of E3. So I want to go back onto the main floor and just walk around a little bit more to see if there was something I missed. And that's the thing, if you can't tell by the footage here, it is so easy to miss stuff. Everywhere you look, there's something shiny and flashy and new and interesting. And you really have to spend all three days just wandering around, letting yourself get lost, you know, just enjoying the spectacle of it all. Because I always find that even if I went down like a similar hallway or a similar path, well, I'll find something new every single time. And that's exactly what happens. Since this is the last full day of E3 for some of us, we all wanted to go out and just have a great time and uh, kind of celebrate the entire week. So what we started off with was going to this place called Clifton's Republic Bar. This is in downtown LA. And this place, guys, as you can see, is a total trip. It's swanky. It's got a tiki themed bar going on here. It's kind of like an amusement park a little bit. I mean, and, and only in that it has a lot of little nooks and crannies and weird stuff to explore. Uh, we had a great time here. This is definitely where we started to maybe drink a little bit too much, <laughs> but the night was young. From there, we hopped an Uber to a place called Scum and Villainy. That is a cantina based on uh, Star Wars Episode Four. Walked in there, it was a little bit smaller than I expected. We actually had to kind of wait for a table, but once we did, it was time for some karaoke. That was pretty funny. Uh, uh, Kinsey got up and sang some karaoke, and then uh, Cody wanted to, but he was losing his voice. So John Riggs took over. I'd love to play you the music here. If I did, we would probably get a copyright claim, but just know that, uh, yeah, it was hopping. It was at this point in the evening when Kelsey and Kinsey tried to recreate that famous scene from Dirty Dancing. Yeah, to say we were happy, well, that would be an understatement. Yeah, woo! 
And here's some swag I got on the third day. These Borderland 3 masks are pretty awesome. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use those for, but you'll probably see them pop up in the background of my videos, as well as this pretty nice jacket from Cyberpunk. Now, that's uh, I guess that's based on one of the gangs in the game, but you can reverse it and use the yellow side if you want. So that was pretty cool. All right, guys, well, that is my highlights from E3 2019. I wanna give a huge shout out to Kelsey Cody, John Riggs, and also Kinsey. Uh, it was awesome hanging with you guys all week long. Uh, it was a pleasure as usual. And, uh, you know, I'm glad you guys got my back. <laughs> Didn't let me get too stupid and too drunk. Also, thanks to everybody who came up to me and said hi, shook my hand, and took a selfie photo. Uh, you guys were amazing. I actually got recognized quite a bit, so that was pretty wild and definitely a lot of fun. And yeah, I'm gonna be back next year, man. I can't help it. Actually, next year we're probably gonna have more of the new uh, console launches, so that's gonna be really exciting. It's gonna be interesting to see what Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo do with that. Um, you know, every year it's just always a blast. So love to know what you guys thought about this video. Please let me know in the comments below. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing and take care.